Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up something like this where you can access your website's files and your server's files right from within a web browser. And you can do things such as upload new files, edit existing files, download existing files, and all that good stuff. So if that's something you want to learn how to do for your website, then let's go ahead and get on into it. So before we start the tutorial, I want to make sure that you understand you should already have a website and you should have SSH access to that website. So if you have those things, we can proceed with the, the actual tutorial. Okay, so this is my website. It's at tonys.surf. It's just a basic Nginx landing page at this point. And what we're gonna do is log in here via SSH. And actually I have already done that. So I am sitting on the terminal here at the server that is hosting this website. Okay, so the uh, the thing that we're gonna install here is called a file browser. So we'll just minimize this real quick. This is uh, the, an open source web-based file browser, okay? And this is kind of what we're going for here. They have installation instructions, uh, which were helpful, uh, but the configuration was a little bit messy. So that's why I decided to make this video to help you guys set this up for your website. So let's go back here. And the first thing we're gonna do is get the content for uh, the file browser. So in your terminal window, go ahead and do a curl uh, for this URL, which is basically the URL of uh, the, the, the project on GitHub. And we're getting this shell script that's going to automatically install things for us. So go ahead and execute that. It's going to download it and install everything. And that was really quick. So right off the bat, we can spin up our file browser and test it out. So Let's do that. I'm gonna, again, use my cheat sheet over here, copy and paste this command to spin up the file browser. So the command is file browser. We're gonna access the file browser over port 8080. The IP address of this particular server is 134.122.27.34, <clears throat> excuse me. And the root of the directory that we want to serve over the file browser is at slash var slash www. Okay, so for you, you can change the port, you can change the IP address, and you can change what you want to serve over the file browser. So we'll hit enter, and that's going to spin it up. Now in our uh, web browser, we can go to this IP address and uh, port number. So let's minimize that and check it out. So we do that, it's gonna serve that content. And by default, uh, this is protected, but the protection by default is not that secure, it's just admin and admin. I'll show you how to change that later. But for now, let's just poke around and see what we got here. So in our, in, on server, let's do this actually side by side. So, uh, oh crap, we can't. Well, I'll show you after the fact. So in our server at the var slash www directory, there's a folder in here called HTML. And in there, there is a single file called index.nginx-dbn.html. And this right here is what's showing this page at tonys.surf. So if I open this file and edit it, uh, no, I don't want to rename it. I just want to edit it. So I'm going to double click on it. Sorry about that. I'm going to change the header one element right here. Welcome to nginx from that to like, comment, subscribe just to show you that we're working with the same thing. Up here, I'm gonna save that file, exit out, go back over to our website, refresh the page, and now it says like, comment, subscribe. So we edited our file, or we sorry, we edited our website directly from within the, the web browser here. We didn't have to download or upload anything via FTP or SSH in. We did that right through the web browser. So that's, that's really cool. Um, in addition to that, you can also, upload and download files. So uh, on my desktop here, I have this PNG file that I'm gonna simply drag and drop right into the HTML directory for this website. So this is called apps.png. So if I go back to my website, I should be able to access that file, tonys.surf slash apps.png, and that should serve that file, and it does not. So what the heck happened there, apps.png. Um, oh. I didn't have an S on the end, so apps.png, then that should serve it. And there is that file served from my website. And here is the local file that I just uploaded. So same thing as we would expect. 
in addition to that, we can also download files. So let's uh, let's download this index.html file. So you can do that. Click on it. Click on download. And there, now we have that on our local file system. So those are the main things that you probably want to do with that. Um, but the, the, one, the one problem right here that you're noticing, maybe you noticed, maybe you didn't, is that we had to run this manually, okay? We, we gave the name of the executable, we passed in some arguments, but if I exit out of this shell session or do a control C to get out of that command being run and go back here to the file browser, it's done, That it's not being served. That was just kind of like a test to show you that it works out of the box. So we have to make a more permanent solution and there's gonna be a two-step process to that. First, we have to make uh, kind of like a configuration file with all of our options so we don't have to specify them on the command line. And then the next one is to make file browser run when the server starts up. So if for whatever reason the server reboots, then it's always gonna be uh, available for you to access. Okay, so the first thing I wanna do is go into the etc directory. And in here, we're gonna basically make a configuration file. It's gonna hold all of our command line arguments so we don't have to specify them on the command line. So that file is going to be called filebrowser.json. And honestly, you can call this whatever you want, but the, the standard naming convention is going to be something like that. Uh, I'm gonna paste some stuff in here. And it's just really name value pairs between these open and close curly brackets. So like before, the port is going to be 8080, the base URL. We're not going to append anything onto it. The address is uh, the IP address. So in this case, this is the IP address of the server. Um, the log output is going to be put to standard out. You could probably put a log file here, a specific log file here if you wanted to. And then the database file is going to also exist in the etc directory and it's going to be called file browser.db. I'll actually show you this was automatically created in our home directory when we uh, did our first example. And then same as before root of the, the, the files that we want to serve are going to be located under var www. Okay, so let's save that. And uh, real quick, in our home directory from before, you'll see that there was another file browser database. We don't need that one anymore. We can actually get rid of that. We're gonna make a new one at slash etc. So let's get rid of that. And now, instead of typing all those arguments on the command line, we, command line, we can just do file browser dash C and then specify the absolute path to the JSON file. C for config, so file browser dot JSON. Hit enter. And that'll bring it back up uh, and, and we can access it in the web browser. This time let's try to access it with the domain name instead of the IP address. So we'll go to tonys.surf colon 8080. Hit enter. And it's gonna prompt us for the username and password, admin, admin. And now we can change the, um, the, the password because we have our permanent location for our file browser database, which is in slash etc. So, Let's go ahead and do that. We can come up to settings and change your password. So I'm going to type something in here. And let's update my password. So now from this point forward, I can log in with my new password and that'll be saved to the database. Okay, so let's make this run when the server runs, okay? And we can do that something, we can do that with a system daemon. And if you're not familiar with that, I'll walk you through the process. But basically, we're gonna take the command that we just ran and put it in a file. And whenever the, ser the system boots up, this will boot up alongside of it. So uh, we'll close out of here for now. And we'll copy this command, or we'll, we'll just take note of this command because we're gonna need it later. But what we're gonna do is actually go um, first in preparation for that. Uh, we have a, a couple configuration files under here now. So we have our configuration file itself and then the database file that was created, okay? So let's change the permissions to be something um, suitable for what we're working with. And we're gonna do that with chown to the www data user in the www data group. And we're gonna change the permissions of these two files specifically, and we can do that really easily with uh, etc file browser star and hit enter. Now, the if we do an ls-la etc file browser star, we'll see that the www data user and group 
are the owners of those files. And that's gonna be important for when we uh, wanna execute this from the system daemon. Okay, um, let's add a system service and we can do that with making a new file at the etc directory system D for system daemon. And then under there in the system directory, we're gonna make a file in here called file browser dot service. Okay, and uh, I'll use my cheat sheet over here. You guys can copy this from the screen or in the description, I'll have some commands linked below and then we'll paste that in. So the description of this service is going to be the file browser. Uh, it comes up after the network is ready. There's the user and group that we specified. And what we're basically gonna do is execute the file browser program, giving it the, um, the configuration file that we created in the etc directory. Okay, so let's save that. And in order to enable that service, we can do system ctl enable file browser dot service, hit enter. So that is now enabled. And then to start it up, we can do system ctl, c system ctl start file browser start start file browser dot service. Okay, so we still we have access to our terminal and this should be running in the background. So let's go to, uh, we'll just go to the homepage, Tony's surf colon 8080, hit enter. And <clears throat> that website is now being served. Um, to check the status, we can do that with system ctl status file browser dot service. And that'll tell us, <clears throat> excuse me, that it is active and running. So if we would, I'm not gonna do it now, but if we would reboot the server and in the period of time when the server's off, obviously we couldn't access it, but when it comes back on, this should start back up with your server. So there you go. Um, if you wanna learn how to add an SSL certificate to this, I recommend that you check out this video next. Thank you guys for watching. Subscribe for more videos like this from me in the future. And if you do, I will see you in the next one.